Hey, everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and yes, <laughs> we've been at it again. But there is a reason. So, once again, we took the hammerhead out and we decided, you know what, let's try to stir up some trouble and see what's going on. Now, the reason behind this was, is we wanted to test out different ideas. We wanted to see what the hammerhead can do, and more importantly, what it can't do. What are its vulnerabilities? What are its problems? What are some of the issues that you may encounter with this ship? Because... You know, at some point in the future, hopefully sooner rather than later, things are actually going to count. Things are going to matter. And so you probably want to know what all your vulnerabilities are and come up with an idea, strategies, tactics to deal with them, to minimize your vulnerabilities while maximizing your strengths. It's kind of an important thing to do, especially in this stage of the game. So, what did we discover? Well, this time around, we realized that the Hammerhead does have a certain exploitable vulnerability in its stock configuration. The problem with the Hammerhead right now is that your guns engage out to a range of about 2,500 meters. Probably fire a little bit beyond that, but in general, 2,500 meters appears to be the limit. Now, that, of course, is not the same limit that other players and other weapons enjoy. In fact, many ships can fire at, you know, a lot further than that. And that's the Hammerhead's problem, is that beyond a certain range, you simply, you can't do anything to somebody, but they can sit back and just pepper you with shots. And that's one of the things that we discovered during this kind of flight experience, was that people were just kind of sitting out of range they were kind of finding the range of the hammerhead and they were actively staying within that certain bubble within that range and they were able to just kind of slowly whittle down the rear end of our ship which actually ended up turning red the ship eventually died when somebody rammed us into the ground but Overall, it was very slowly becoming apparent that the ship was just being chewed up by these ranging shots. It was, you know, it was a smart strategy to deal with a ship like this, it was to stay out of its range. So we kind of thought of different ideas, different ways to kind of tackle this issue. This issue. Um, the first one was obviously put longer range guns on the turrets. But, you know, there's something to be said for a volume of fire, especially from, you know, the side turrets, that just that sheer volume of fire. It kind of closes the gaps between shots and it makes it a lot more difficult to evade the guns. It, you know, it's kind of a spray and pray idea, but it seems to, you know, generally it seems to work. And so we kind of, we wanted to kind of go back with the hammerhead and change the top and bottom turret. Also the, you know, that's also the rear turret. We wanted to change the guns on those to much longer range weapons. So where you have those turrets that for the most part are 360 degrees all around the ship, up, down, whatnot. Those turrets would be able to fire the furthest. So if someone's kind of staying out of range behind you, that rear turret can still engage them. And from the top turret, you can engage anyone all around you as long as they're, you know, of course, above you. With, you know, with those weapons, of course, the bottom turret can a little bit fire to the front, but not quite. But it can cover the entire bottom range, making life you know, a little bit easier for the gunners. Whereas the side turrets, perhaps try them with just the traditional weapons and see how that pans out over time. So with that in mind, you know, we kind of looked at the costs of different weapons and quickly found them to be, you know, quite exorbitant. <laughs> And so any real strategy, changing up all kinds of different weapons, maybe even changing all the turrets to longer range weapons, 
it really isn't viable in the current version of the game. I mean, it's possible, but you know, the way the game is with reliability issues and whatnot, certainly, you know, I could take a, a, uh, a caterpillar out and I could just do something simple like the Tram and Myers run and I could very quickly generate a lot of cash, but anywhere along the line, I could instantly just get completely wiped out either you know, being attacked or simply the game disconnects and decides, oh no, you can't recover the session. Sorry, your million space bucks is now out the window. And, you know, there's a reason why the economy is the way that it is. And I mean, there's a certain wisdom to it, right? You don't want players to get used to the idea of everything's fast and easy and you can just grab whatever you want and just go because at some point, you know, when the harsh real rules come into play, players are going to go, oh my God, I wasn't prepared for this. And there can be quite a shock when something like that happens. Now, I have a suggestion. Now, weapons on a ship are basically components, right? You go out, you get your components, you get, let's say these are Rhino repeaters on the hammerhead, but let's say you want to try out the ballistic version let's say you want to try out the revenant or the next level up gatling gun on these turrets you want to try out a whole lot of different things but these things really just cost an exorbitant amount of money to test out well what if the basic weapon itself what if the basic component itself was actually dirt cheap however the true value the true expense came in the sub components and how you modified that weapon system to you know enhance certain features and minimize certain other features how you kind of played that whole balancing game with the components on a ship in order to increase their strength and their value what if that was where the real cost came in? Let's say you go out, you buy the UEE Navy version of this repeater, and it's of a higher quality and a higher cost, but that is expressed through the subcomponents that that weapon already comes equipped with, right? So the basic version of the weapon is actually very cheap. It's you having to go out there and you know find, manufacture, or however you go through it in the game through reputations and reputation vendors, whatever, source the subcomponents where the real value comes out. The basic weapon or the basic component might have certain grades indicating how modifiable it is, and that may affect the cost, but the real cost comes in with the subcomponents in engineering your ship and its components to a much higher degree than is what is basically available, you know, straight up at a shop. It's the things that you have to go and do to modify the ship and allow you to tinker with it and really get the real performance and value out of those systems. Many games, even like Elite Dangerous, EVE Online, have certain systems within the game where the basic components purchasing them can be quite trivial, but modifying them or engineering them up to a higher grade is where the real expense lies. So a basic Rhino repeater might cost 2,000 credits, but engineering it and taking it to the maximum you know, limits of its performance envelope might cost a huge sum of money. And so then it's up to the player to take that basic ship and then kind of go on a journey with that ship, earning the money, engineering. That's often a, a very fulfilling experience, going and tinkering with things and slowly building you know, the performance envelope of your ship up. A lot of players generally enjoy that type of system, taking even something like this basic hammerhead and saying, I'm going to go and I'm going to tinker with the shields. I'm going to tinker with the engine. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to customize it. I'm going to make it the way I want it to be, you know, with the weapons that I want to use. A lot of players find a lot of fulfillment out of systems like that. And I think that that's something that Star Citizen could certainly use. But why should we want it? Why do we need it? And the truth is, is that, you know, there is this kind of illusion. There is this kind of idea that some people seem to have that they're actually playing the game right now. 
right? That they're actually playing Star Citizen. This isn't a full featured finished game. Right? There's no progression here. What we're doing is we're testing out certain ideas while we watch them lay the foundation of that game. And a lot of that revolves around combat. And I always kind of think that it's a little bit weird that we invest so much into kind of maintaining this illusion that Star Citizen is actually a game. Like, oh, we're on 3.4.1. No, we're on 0.3.44. Let's be real here for a second. And I'm sure that, you know, it, it helps lessen the blow of the, you know, the time that it's taken to develop this game by calling it 3.4.1, but let's be real, it's that's not honestly there. This is not a full featured game. This isn't really even a finished alpha, right? So I think we should move into an area that allows players to kind of test different types of weapons, different types of shields a lot more freely. I think that that's more important than maintaining that illusion that they're actually playing Star Citizen when in reality Star Citizen is still quite a ways off. Oftentimes in the PTU, we'll be given vast sums of money to test out different things. And I think that Star Citizen should be the same way. Every time we reset, we should be probably sitting on a couple of hundred million credits so that we can go out and we can continuously buy all kinds of fresh new weapons for our ships and we can try out different configurations. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I would like to go out there and I would like to take the Pirate Caterpillar and I would like to test out its turrets with all types of different weapons. I would like to fight NPCs with it and I would like to do this on a, on a daily basis. You know? That's important to seeing you know, what works and what doesn't work in the PU. This is, you know, this is an important thing. As we move it into a point where all of a sudden we're playing for keeps, you want to have as much knowledge and as much experience as possible. I, I often find it really weird that there are people who are just kind of playing the game as if they're actually playing the game rather than playing it to test it. You know, like if I, I mean, honestly, I want to go out there in every ship in the game and test them all out in combat, see what I like, what I don't like, see what works, what doesn't work. What are situations I should run away from? What are situations that I should dive into head first? That sort of thing. I want to know what all these things are so that once the game is actually a game and we're playing for keeps, I know what I'm doing, or at least I have a fairly good idea of how I'm going to handle myself profitably in that universe. And I think that those, those needs supersede, supersede the... Uh, the need to maintain the illusion that Star Citizen is a game right now, because it really isn't. Having recently had a front row seat to watching a popular MMO basically fall on its own sword because it wouldn't let players test certain in-game systems until they went live, and then by that time, you know what players had long suspected was proven true that their core game systems weren't viable and were actually very unfun, it was too late to fix it. Now, of course, an argument could have been made that that was done deliberately, but we will not get into that because that is a whole series of videos unto themselves. But what I'm trying to say here is that testing really is key, not just for you know personal you know, knowledge, but for the game itself, knowing what works and what doesn't work and knowing if a ship needs to go back and really get a second look, or if it's just a question of, yeah, the default loadout sucks, but if you change it to this, it actually works out pretty nicely. I think that's the important thing, and that's where the focus really should be in Star Citizen right now. But once again, my opinion. You might differ from that, you might argue a different point. Feel free to do so in the comment section below. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.